welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Glasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. We're going to be talking about an issue that is probably, to me, one of the most important issues in our lifetimes. And it's hardly ever covered. It's hardly ever covered in the news. It's hardly ever covered by our medical doctors. It's hardly ever even discussed. And yet it is one of the most important things in our lives. My special guest today is Dr. Roy Spicer. He's vice president and co-founder of CWR Environmental Products, a provider of personal protection equipment solutions. But if I could call him anything, I'd call him Dr. Water. Roy is a water quality specialist with over 35 years experience in scientific research and clinical practice. In addition to being a bacteriologist at the New Jersey Department of Health, he was also the lead researcher in the molecular biology department at the Ortho Research Foundation. He's dedicated his life to working on environmental health conditions, developing water purification equipment for the military and government agencies, and now for the general public as well. See why I call him Dr. Water? Let's give a nice warm welcome to Dr. Roy Spicer. Hello, Dr. Roy. Hello, Christine. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Or as I like to call you, Dr. Water. <laughs> That'll be fine. Dr. Water is good. Water, water. This is something that is so absolutely precious to us and so, for me, such an important subject. That's why I wanted to do a, a full program with you all around water. And I don't know if our listeners are aware of it, but just some kind of important facts that we want to put out there before we get started is that the, the fact is that we can go several weeks without food, but only about three days without water. And I don't know if people know this, but our bodies are comprised of approximately 80% water. Water makes up about 85% of our brains, about 80% of our blood, and about 70% of our lean muscle mass. Also, water is absolutely essential for proper digestion, for nutrient absorption and chemical reactions. Water is absolutely essential for proper circulation in the body. Why? Because the levels of oxygen in the bloodstream are greater when the body is well hydrated. So not only will the body burn more fat when well hydrated, but because there are increased oxygen levels, you'll also have a lot more energy. Another important aspect about water is that it removes toxins. Uh, water can help remove toxins from the body, in particular through the uh, digestive tract. And studies have shown that a decrease in water intake, so if you're not drinking enough water, that will cause fat deposits to, de to increase while an increase in water intake can actually reduce fat deposits. There's so many different things about water. We want to get into that with Dr. Roy Spicer, but I wanted to give uh, our audience just a little bit of a layout of why water is so important. Dr. Spicer, you've been studying water and the quality of our water for a very long time. Can you let our listeners know? I know I missed a lot in that opening introduction, but why is water so essential to us for, for, for life? I mean, it's a basic question, but a lot of people don't even think about it. Well, as you mentioned, Christine, uh, water is the key to wellness, and you must have safe, clean water. It's important for every physiological process in your body. Uh, it keeps the liver clean. It delivers vitamins and nutrients to every cell in your body. And you cannot be healthy if you're not drinking clean water, especially when you're sick, you need clean water because you have to recover and eliminate toxins. So I think he covered all the aspects of the importance of water. But what I think is really an issue today is that most people don't understand that the water they're drinking is toxic. 
tap water is dangerously polluted all over the United States. And the myth of clean water is the fact that most people accept that because the water meets standards, government standards, they accept that as safe and clean. And that's not true. What the real issue is, is that the government allows a lot of contaminants in the water at different levels that are seriously unsafe. For example, arsenic, a very common contaminant. And if you go back to the Clinton administration, the levels of arsenic that were allowed, and we use the term maximum concentration level, MCL. MCL is a artificial standard that allows contaminants in the water up to a certain level that's been unscientifically established. What I mean is it's based on junk science, all these values that are allowed. So back in the Clinton administration, arsenic was allowed up to 50 parts per billion. That was considered allowable, not safe, not healthy, but allowable. Then they changed the standard to make it more strict. So today the standard is 10 parts per billion. So the water you were drinking 20, 30 years ago that was allowed up to 50 parts is considered unsafe today. But really, arsenic at any level is unsafe. It should really be zero. You shouldn't be drinking any arsenic because it's a toxic heavy metal. It's a carcinogen that's a cancer-causing substance. And it will cause long-term health effects that because the arsenic that bioaccumulates in your body. So first we have to understand is what's really in a water. It's not water anymore. It's really a toxic soup. And I'll go through that discussion. But more importantly, you can't accept the fact that your municipal treatment company that's providing you water and adding a lot of toxic substances to it is safe water. It is not. Well, and as we've heard in the news recently, there's been so much, uh, people just think they turn on the faucet and they'll see the water and it's you know relatively clear and so they'll think that it's okay. And, and as we, we're going to get into all of the different chemicals that are in the water, in particular in the tap water, it's, it's insane. But there's also been some real serious problems with the pipes, right? The, uh, the infrastructure in the United States. And one issue in particular that really came to the forefront, although you haven't heard much about it now, is the crisis in Flint, uh, Flint Michigan. Do, can you talk about that? I know you really looked into that a lot. Certainly. Uh, Flint Michigan, the disaster there was just the tip of the iceberg. Basically, they didn't have the money to pay Detroit to supply the water, so they decided to use the Flint River. And they redirected uh, the water into the city system. And what they didn't do was add some anti-corrosive agents or um, materials that would prevent erosion of the pipes. And there's a lot of old pipes in the country, in addition to Flint, Michigan, in some cases that were made out of lead. I mean, New York City is one of those areas. And back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were using pure lead because it was a soft, malleable metal to deliver water. It was part of the infrastructure. Uh, there's a lot of homes in the United States that have lead solders. Any house built prior to 1982 may have lead solders in copper pipe. But the Flint, Michigan was just one example of hundreds or thousands of areas in the United States where the infrastructure is rotting, is corroding. Uh, there are serious issues with growth of bacteria in the pipes and water treatment companies to meet the standards that exist have to add a lot of different chemicals, disinfection chemicals such as chlorine. Now they're using more aggressive chemicals like chloramine. They add aluminum sulfate to make the water look clear. Those are called flocculating agents. So there's a lot of chemicals and substances being added to water to make it appealing as far as uh, visually appealing. Uh, Taste-wise, a lot of these toxic substances don't have any taste. For example, lead, you don't taste it. Parasites, you don't taste. Well, you may smell a taste of something like chlorine when it gets up to very high levels, when I dose it up high at high levels because of bacteria growth. That could be objectionable, or you may have uh, a sulfur smell, like a rotten egg smell, which could be coming from uh, wells that have uh, iron bacteria, or it may have naturally occurring sulfur. So there's a lot of aesthetic issues that just because the water is clear doesn't mean it's safe or healthy. So we, we can't go, just go by the way it looks or smells or tastes. The water has more 
complex uh, issues in it. For example, certain chemicals, heavy metals, bacteria, micro microorganisms like cryptosporidium, parasites. Uh, there are special contaminants they're finding in the water now. And the biggest problem right now that's emerging is pharmaceuticals, drugs in the water. Right. So, so you, you really have to look a little deeper in, and understand that water is a complex uh, solution of many different substances. And what we're drinking today is not clean, safe water for the most part. And how many glasses of water a day should like a healthy human being, not just somebody who's just trying to survive, but someone who would, would you, would you say, um, is it what half of your, half of your body weight in ounces, something like that or more? Well, it's a good question. Uh, you mentioned earlier, not drinking enough water causes dehydration. And a lot of people are dehydrated. And as we get older, one of the signs of dehydration is the joints uh, shrink, literally your spine joints shrink, other joints shrink. And there's a good book out there called The Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Jamal. And he discussed that. So most people are really dehydrated. And to drink enough water is difficult for most people. You know, if I said drink a gallon a day, that's a lot of water. So you'd be drinking water all day long. But I think reasonably, if you drank six or eight, eight ounce glasses at least, that's a reasonable amount of water. It's close to a gallon, but it doesn't have to be a gallon of water. It depends. If you're a child, you don't need a gallon of water a day. But you can get some good water from juices if they're uh, good juices, not sugary juices. Coffee and tea don't count because they use if they're unless they're decaffeinated. So you get a little bit of water from there. But drinking tap water is okay, except you have to filter it. You cannot drink water directly out the tap from the tap because there's so many contaminants. So I'd rather you drink it from other sources unless you're filtering the water. So when you say how much water do we need? Well, we need close to a gallon a day for a full size adult, but it has to be pure water or pretty close to pure. And that's what we're going to get into about the the pure water. I I know that this country in particular, we are working off of a dehydrated society. I think I I believe that a lot of the illnesses, the problems that people go to their doctor for to remedy, I believe a lot of them is because they just have not drank enough water. And I, no doctor asks you, nobody, no no physician asks you, so how much water do you drink a day? You know, on, on even on the forms that they have you fill out, you know, are you on prescription drugs? You know, do you have cancer in your family? Do you, do you have a history of this or that? Or blah, 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 blah. Have you ever been pregnant? Okay. <laughs> but nobody asks you how much water you're consuming. And there's a whole host of, of issues and, and things that can go wrong with the body when we are dehydrated. And I really do believe that in this society, with so many other drinks that people are drinking, maybe maybe a hundred years ago this was not a problem. Number one, the water the water was probably different, but also they didn't have all of the soft drinks and sports drinks and juices and you know soda and and all of that. And my research for this particular show, the other soft the soft drinks and a lot of the real sugary juices actually rob the body of water because of the sugar content and the uh, the chemical content as well. Well, that's true. The body wants to maintain a normal physiological pH. And what that means is there's a normal balance between acid and alkaline substances in the body. <clears throat> so in order for the body to work correctly, there's a certain range of pH, usually around 7, 5, 7, 6, that it wants to maintain. And you do need, uh, also in addition to water, minerals, natural minerals like calcium, magnesium. Now, a lot of people feel that water is a good source of calcium, magnesium. Some people don't think it's a good source because it's inorganic minerals. Right now, I don't think it's a good source of minerals for one reason. You're getting all these other toxic substances in the water with the minerals. So if I want to get my calcium, magnesium from water, I'm getting potentially dozens of pharmaceuticals, dozens of heavy, heavy metals, industrial chemicals, special contaminants are things like perchlorate, which is a, a, a byproduct of uh, munitions. You could have gasoline additive in there. You could have bacteria and parasites. So when you look at your source of minerals for the body's function, water is really not a good source. It's not a clean source. And if you're going to drink 
six or eight glasses of water a day, do you want to drink a toxic cocktail? I don't. I wouldn't recommend it. So again, I have to preface the amount of water you're going to drink by saying that you have to drink clean, safe water. You can't put more toxic substances in your body. When you do that, all these heavy metals will accumulate. I'll give you an example. Fluoride, for example. It's a big controversy. It's not controversial. There is hundreds of studies that show, show that drinking fluoridated water, there's different types of fluoride. Uh, they use sodium fluoride. They may use the more toxic form of fluorosilicic acid. It's a neurotoxin. It's been studied extensively. You 26 different studies and fluoride in higher uh, concentrations leads to lower IQ in children. So again, fluoridated water, which about 70% of the municipal water in the United States is fluoridated, is toxic. And that's just one of many different substances that are in the water that they add or that leach into the ground that get into your drinking water. So it's a, it's a dual-edged sword that you have to really be careful how you get your source of water, how you handle your water, and how to make it safe. And there's a lot of different things we could discuss as far as filters, as far as bottled water. Um, but there's a lot of misconceptions about that also. But the first step is recognizing you cannot drink water out of tap. It's not safe. And to, not healthy. to just drive that point home, to, to make sure that the listeners understand that your tap water is not safe. And I don't care where you live. Let's say, though, in, let's say I'm here in California. Let's say, Dr. Spicer, I turn on my tap, my faucet. I put my glass underneath there and I fill that glass with water. What just, and this is like off at the top of your head, what, in addition to H2O, well, what am I, what am I, what is in that glass of water that I'm about to drink or to give to my child? Now you're in California, I'm in Florida. I look at water reports every day and you can actually, it's very simple to look up your water report and see what's in it. So for example, let's say you live in Los Angeles, that's the metropolitan water district. You can look up Los Angeles. And, and you go to Google and put Los Angeles CA water quality report. So put your, type your city in, the state, abbreviated, water quality report. Now it'll get you to a website. It'll probably say 2014, 2015. Click that on and it's a PDF usually. And you scroll down and then you'll have a list of the contaminants that are detected in your water may not be a complete list, but it'll give you some of the contaminants. For example, chlorine. Now, chlorine or the newer form of chlorine is chloramine. That's chlorine plus ammonia. They have a MCL or a concentration level of four parts per million. That's what they allow. So you may see a range. It may go from half a part up to five parts. And depending on the time of the year, it may be higher because like in the summer, you have bacteria growing, they'll add more disinfectant. So you could be, let's say now we're in the middle of summer and you turn on your shower on Monday morning, if they spike the water system with chlorine, it may smell a little bit like Clorox. You may smell that. So again, depends on where you live. So there's usually chlorine in the water. You can see that in the report, it'll tell you the level. They may be using chloramine now. So that's another disinfectant. Then you have all the byproducts of chlorine, which are called trihalomethanes, THMs. That's, that's a whole range of byproducts from chlorine. And there's another group of byproducts called HAAs. HAAs are haloacetic acid. So within those two groups of byproducts, you may have hundreds of different toxic carcinogenic compounds. The EPA considers trihalomethanes po uh, probable carcinogens. So those are the things that you're drinking in your water when you turn on the tap. And that's pretty much in every water supply in the United States. They either chlorinate it or use a combination of chlorine and chloramine. Every municipal treatment company uses that. Maybe less than a half a percent of the country doesn't use it, but that's only because they may have a really clean water supply, which is unusual. But that's a standard that the municipal treatment companies have to meet. They have to make the water potable, which means it's free of bacteria or below a certain percentage of bacteria. And in some cases now, when you have these natural disasters, when you have sewage getting into the treatment systems, uh, you're gonna super chlorinate the water to kill all the sewage bacteria, which are disease causing. So that's another problem that we're dealing with now. You know, Louisiana is one case. Uh, when you have flooding, that, that creates more stress on the treatment system. In some cases, they have to shut down the treatment plants when there's power outages. 
and now you cannot drink the water because it's not potable. And it takes days or weeks till they get back in operation to flush out the main system to get potable water to your house. So, you know, the short answer to what you get when you turn on a tap, I can guarantee is going to be chlorine, chlorine residual, byproducts of chlorine, possibly chloramine. Very commonly, I'd say 90% or better, the water systems have lead in the water. They have several heavy metals, possibly barium. I've seen uh, cadmium, not common, but it's in the water. Uh, fluoride, fluoride or flu fluoride derivatives. And you may have some bacteria in the water and special contaminants like nitrates. Uh, you may have MTBE, which is a gasoline additive. It's been around uh, because of all the old leaking gas stations. So again, you could have a whole cocktail. I've seen some areas of Texas, for example, one area had 10 industrial chemicals, 10 industrial chemicals plus a lot of heavy metals. And this one area, they have a lot of leukemia clusters. So, uh, you know, it, it depends on where you live, but I would like to know myself what I'm drinking. I will not drink uh, bottled water unless it's very specific brands. I usually take water with me, but you have to start having a consciousness that wherever you are, whether in your home or you're out and how to get clean water. I just looked up the, uh, there was the Los Angeles, California drinking water quality report. The water quality score, score for Los Angeles was an F as in failed and scrolling down to see the, the, uh, the violations or the, the, you know, above legal limits at the top of the list, Dr. Spicer, at the very top of the list was arsenic. The legal limit, as they say, was 10 but 10 legal limit, which I agree, I don't think there should be any legal limit for arsenic, but the positive results, what they had seen was 292. Above health limits was 280. TTHMS, a, a trihalomethanes. Methane. Yeah. Right. So that was also very highly spiked. Also highly spiked was, um, uh, well, there's the total arsenic, Radium-226, radium-228, bromate, and lead. Uh, radium-226 and radium, is that from, what is that from? Well, usually there's naturally occurring uranium in the ground. Uh, there are parts of California, uh, some areas have higher levels of uranium. And uranium has several byproducts or radionuclides, which are radon-226, 228. Uh, in addition to uranium in the water, you may have some of the gas, which is radon, some of the byproducts, and in your home, if you have a foundation, you may have radon, radon gas coming up through the foundation, which is another issue, but uh, typically naturally occurring radioactivity. When I say naturally occurring, it's around. There's also, I see strontium in the water. Mm -hmm. Some it may be from the old bomb blasts that were done in the 1950s. Now you have uh, the currents bringing over the radioactivity from Fukushima, the uh, plant. So it might have been temporarily some radioactive iodine that I don't think it's in the water right now. Could be. I don't think they're measuring it, though. But there's naturally occurring radioactivity in water. So again, you know, if you add it all up, chemicals, heavy metals, uh, disinfection byproducts, industrial chemicals, it's a chemical soup. So when you read that chart, that, that report, they have what's called the MCL at the top. That's the maximum concentration level. So you may get below what's allowable, you may get above what's allowable. There's a range. And what they usually do is they take the average, which is usually below the MCL. For example, certain times of the year, you may have one part per million of chlorine, and sometimes you may have five parts, but the average may be three. So in which case it meets the standard. So that's just a numbers game. So you, you have to look at these charts a certain way, but it gives you a basic understanding that you have a lot of different contaminants in your water, even at low levels. Uh, yeah. And especially when the, the, the top one is arsenic and then the next one is lead that, that makes me, um, n you know, very, very cautious about water in general. Now, now, now I'm hearing the, the listeners, I'm hearing them say, well, that's all fine and good. I don't drink water from the tap. I have the ability to go and buy bottled water. Now, first of all, there's been a lot of stories about the actual quality of the water from some of these, they call the, you know, the pristine sourced water. Do you have, uh, cause I, I've heard a lot of like 
some of these bottled water things, it's basically, they're just doing it right out of the tap. Have you heard that? It's very common. Um, you may have a deep injection well, there's one bottle of water, uh, Mountain Valley, for example. Uh, that's usually better quality, but it's also very expensive. And what happens, you know, in terms of bottled water, there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Uh, yes, it is, in some cases, maybe a third of the bottled water is good quality, but now you have the issue of sitting in plastic. You're sitting in plastic, soft plastic bottles. And what does that mean? Well, they've done a lot of studies where soft plastics leach substances like uh, phthalates, BPA, bisphenol A, and other plasticizers that will cause disruption to your hormone system as one thing. So they're hormone disruptors, plasticizers that leach out of soda bottles, soft soda bottles, soft water bottles are xenoestrogens. They're called xenoestrogens or hormone disruptors. It's a lot of negative impacts on the body, especially with children. So, you know, you're developing your, your physiology and now if you're gonna put estrogen-like substances in your body, that's gonna have some serious consequences. And we get these from many sources, not just water, but from food. Plastics are not good for your health and water sitting in plastic bottles will leach plastic into the water. So you're drinking a certain amount of, of plastic when you drink bottled water. Plus the fact the quality of the water is questionable in some cases, they're not all equally good. And you have to look at how they're filtered. Now, there are standards in the bottled water industry, but then you have the issue of, well, what are you gonna do for cooking? What are you gonna do for rinsing? Uh, you still have to bathe. So it's a partial solution, it's not a full use solution, it's pretty expensive and it doesn't solve your whole problem. You may be getting additional contaminants. There are some uh, studies that have been done, uh, National Resource Defense Council did a study years ago, about two thirds of the bottled waters had contaminants in them that were still coming from the source water that weren't filtered out. Wow. So that's just one indicator. Now there are, cert not certified, but tested bottled waters. There are, NSF is a testing agency in the water industry for filtration devices and bottled water. So you can look up NSF bottled water. They're better quality because they have been tested for contaminants. So that's one way you can tell if the bottled water you're drinking, if it's approved or, or listed by NSF, that's generally a better quality. But again, it's not the solution. Totally. No, it's it's extremely expensive. And, you know, you look around and you see just everybody with these soft plastic uh, water bottles because it's convenient, you know, and I understand that it's convenient. And they think, they believe that if it's for sale, that it must be, you know, healthy or healthier than tap water. But all you got to do is leave your bottled water in the car one afternoon and that puppy heats up. And when you, I've done it before because I've just been so damn thirsty and I take a swig and I literally like spit it out because I can taste plastic. That's, that's how fast it, it can transfer into the water. I mean, you literally can taste it. So um, it's, it's definitely not a solution just to buy your bottled water because of, uh, of everything that we were talking about. Now, what I want to talk about is what we can do now. And, and I understand that you have phenomenal water filter that you have been working on for many years and developing. Can you talk about this particular one? Cause it's, you've got a, we've got a really special thing just for out of the box radio listeners. We're going to tell them more about the, the special offer, but what is this water filter that you've been developing? And I want to remind, Oh, before you answer, I'm talking to Dr. Roy Spicer, who I affectionately call Dr. Water. He is a water quality specialist with over 35 years experience in scientific research and clinical practice. He has developed water purification equipment for the military, government agencies, and now for the general public as well. So yes, let's talk about this, this latest, the latest technology and the water filter unit that we are going to be offering our listeners. Well, the challenge, Christine, has been over the years, because of more and more emerging contaminants that they're finding in the water, we're trying to develop filter technologies that will remove this whole range of contaminants. It's very difficult because you have different things in the water, chemicals, heavy metals, pharmaceuticals, special contaminants. So you're dealing with a multiple range or wide range of different types of contaminants. So we took existing technology and then we developed new technology and combined it. The existing technology for the pathogenic bacteria and parasites is a ceramic filtration. 
It's been used for 150 years, but it's been now improved. And the way it has been improved is that the porosity, the uh, a ceramic is a porous material, but it has a very small pore size. And the pore size is small enough to let water through, but it stops a lot of substances like bacteria, parasites, sediment, particles, and it'll stop it cold. Plus, when it traps bacteria, it doesn't allow the bacteria to regrow, which is a problem in most carbon filters. Uh, carbon block filters take out chemicals like chlorine and some of the chlorine byproducts, but when bacteria get in there or parasites, they can continue to grow and they eventually make the filter unsafe. And that's a problem. So if you put a ceramic shell around a block of material, filter material, and we're using a new advanced type of filter material that I co-developed with a manufacturer called Metal Gone. So we took the ceramic shell, the outer part, to filter out the bacteria, parasites, sediment, and the inner part is a new material called Metal Gone. It's, it's a pretty special, unique material, and it's proprietary, so it's, it's a combination of a carbon material with a certain mineral content that's blended together so it not only has an adsorption of chemicals, but it also has a charge. And when positive, negative charged material or heavy metals get in there, it'll trap them by charge. So a negative charged material like fluoride can be trapped by a positive charged mineral. So this unique material is called Metal Gone, and we developed it. And we tested this to NSF ANSI standards. That's the highest standard in the industry. And the one filter will take out chloramine, chlorine, fluoride, lead, 99% fluoride, 92%. It traps uh, trihalomethanes, 95%. And we tested with the new standard against pharmaceutical compounds. We tested against 15 pharmaceutical compounds. And it took out 95% of the pharmaceutical compounds. Wow. Including progesterone, ibuprofen, uh, acetaminophen. These are common pharmaceuticals found in water. Herbicides, 99%. So... Chlor uh, even chloramine, that's very hard to get out. We take out 99% of chloramine, and the filter's cleanable. So when it traps dirt on the surface, uh, it can clean off the filter with a simple brushing with a uh, scrubbing pad. So it has all these features built into one filter, which is unique. There's nothing else like it on the market, and it's, it's 50 to 100 times better than any filter that I've ever worked with. A, this is a very unique new filter technology. What I really am excited about is the ability for it to remove fluoride because, and fluoride, you know, everybody, in it, it's been, the society's been so brainwashed for so many years by the American Dental Association too, saying that fluoride is good, fluoride is good. Well, okay, even if you agree, even if you think that fluoride is good for your teeth, when you add it to the water, it's not going on your teeth and staying there. It's going into your body, into your bloodstream. Dr. Roy, can you expand a little bit on, on fluoride? Do you know what it does chemically to the body, this, the, the fluoride that they add into the water? They, they, they don't add it to the water in other countries. They add it to the water here in the United States. But, uh, well, yeah. I actually just got a new study. It uh, was published in the Journal of Water and Health and examined the links between water fluoridation and type 2 diabetes. So now diabetes is one of the fastest growing health epidemics in the United States. Um, and they're saying that fluoride can be a contributing factor to diabetes. That's just one negative impact. Now, if you go online on the Fluoride Action Network, FAN Fluoride Action Network, they've actually compiled over 100 studies, scientific studies, on the effects of fluoride in just about every organ system in the body. So, for example, uh, the newer studies have shown that fluoride damages bone, and that's kind of... Um, contrary to what the belief is that you, when you're a child you want to take fluoride to make your bones stronger but in actuality it displaces calcium in the bone and people who live in fluoridated areas naturally fluoridated areas as you get older have a higher incidence of osteoporosis now it's, it's because the bone structure is actually weaker when you put fluoride in the bone matrix it's not naturally occurring in, in, in your body and when you're putting this artificial substance instead of calcium, it makes your bones weaker. Uh, so they related this to uh, skeletal fluorosis. And one of the things that uh, happened in the last several years is the uh, Health and Human Services came out and stated that they want the fluoride levels to be lowered in water. So prior to this, the EPA allowed four parts per million, which is very high. And 
what they studied, and this is well known, is that when you go over two parts per million, you get what's called dental fluorosis. That's actually staining, brown staining of the teeth, or modeling, M-O-T-T-L-E-I-N-G, modeling, which is a sign of toxicity. So when you're drinking too much fluoride, wa fluoridated water, and a lot of um, juices have fluoride, children get toxic and their teeth get stained brown. So it really has a very negative impact on growing bone. It's also with toxic substances. I mean, for example, fluoride negatively affects the thyroid. Uh, there's one study by Dr. Baczynski. He found that uh, fluoride lowered thyroid function. It's a very common problem today, uh, hypothyroidism. Wow. So, you know, it, it has so many negative impacts. on It's a, a toxic chemical. They actually use fluorosilicic acid in glass etching. They etch glass with it. So it's not a natural substance to the body. It, it can damage the brain. It, it can damage the thyroid. Um, I'm looking can, here. I'm looking right now at the fluoride. Uh, it's called fluoridealert.org. They had a, just a quick fact. 50 studies have linked fluoride with reduced IQ in children. That's yes. scary. Okay, so what? Medicine, yeah, what the hell? So you're so you're making so we're making our kids dumber, you know, reducing the IQ of of our children. And then another quick fact, they said that yes, excessive fluoride exposure can cause osteoporosis. They've also pointed out that 97% of Western Europe has rejected water fluoridation. They know something that the American people don't. Because if you ask a, an American, it, first of all, if you ask if their water is fluoridated, they don't, they don't know. And if you say, it, do you think it's a good idea? They would, they would, most of them would say, yeah, because they believe the myth about, well, I, I want to have good teeth. I, I, wanna, I want my teeth to be okay. They think that ingesting it in water and putting it into their body, washing with it, whatever, is, is good for their teeth. It's crazy. It's just, that's well, just crazy. Even Health and Human Services finally admitted it was too much of a good thing. So they lowered it to 0.8 parts per million or 0.7 now from four because it was creating this uh, brown staining on children's teeth. Plus you have fluoride from other sources uh, and juices. Like I mentioned, uh, it could be uh, multiple fluoride sources in children. So the top three or four contaminants like lead is, I'd say, the number one contaminant in water that you really do not want to drink. The filter will remove 99% of lead up to 150 parts per billion. And in Flint, Michigan, um, there were in verified reports, but it was up into the thousands of parts that they measured. I mean, that was extraordinary. And those people that are exposed to it, the children that are exposed to it, they're gonna have serious lifetime health consequences. Lead is a cumulative heavy metal. It's very toxic. It's another neurotoxin. It affects your heart and it's a nasty, nasty heavy metal. So lead, number one, we can remove 99%, greater than 99%. Fluoride with the new metal gone material, we tested it against all types of fluoride, including hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium fluorosilicate, and fluorosilicic acid, and we got out 92%, removed 92% at 0.8 parts per million. That's, that's extraordinary. Wow. There's no other filter that can do that. So we combine all the contaminants that remove the chloramine, fluoride, lead, pharmaceuticals, uh, chloramine, and bacteria parasites, you have an extraordinary filter technology that just doesn't exist anywhere else. There is no other filter that I know of that can meet and exceed those standards. It, it just doesn't exist. This is the only filter that's been out on the market recently that can do that. And this has taken a lot of study. It's taken a lot of work to get to this point, but we actually have one filter that can do just about everything. And I can, I, I would bet the farm that also these bottled waters that people think are so healthy are not removing fluoride and let alone 92% from the water supply. Cause I, and, and most people, again, we're going back to the fluoride idea. They think that it's the same kind of fluoride that's in the toothpaste. As you made clear, it's not, it's a byproduct. Is it not of like fertilizer and, and, uh, the, the phosphate industry, they just, it's, it's used to like, they well, just dump it in the water. Yeah, a lot from the aluminum industry. Uh, it's a whole long story, but it, it's just a, a really bad story. And it's time that, you know, and, and there's a movement in the country to start taking it out of the water. More people are becoming aware of it. But in the meantime, it's a difficult decision. I mean, parents are told by dentists that if you don't fluoridate your child's teeth, they'll decay and, and they won't have the structure. Well, 
there's a lot of issues there because children today eat a lot of sugary foods. They don't have a good balanced diet. They don't get enough calcium in their diet. So of course, you know, it's a simple solution, but it's really a toxic solution. It's not really a solution. And I think you don't want to be drinking your water. You don't want medicate, medicated water. That's the way I look at it. This yeah. is mass medication. Yeah. And, you know, I want the choice, especially I'm getting older. I'm almost 70 years old. I don't want to have osteoporosis. I, I live a very healthy life. Plus, I don't take any medications, but what about uh, uh, older people that take a lot of medications? Now, you're going to be taking estrogen in the water. They have heart medication. They found uh, anti-anxiety in 46 areas in the United States, affecting 41 million people. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Again, they haven't studied all these water systems. New York City hasn't even tested their water for pharmaceuticals. So I, I think that over the next several years, more and more contaminants are going to get into our water. It's just coming back up from all the dumping, the pharmaceutical companies have dumped, the hospitals have dumped, people flush their medications down the toilet, um, you have leaching, toxic waste sites. So you, you have to really address this uh, as a, a crucial issue. You really can't have water that's not filtered. It's just not healthy and you can't stay well. And if you're sick, you can't get well. And um, the beautiful thing about the, the filter that you've developed too is that it's now, it's available to the public I've been looking at the background of this particular water filter and it is phenomenal, especially the fact that it removes, I love the fact that it removes the fluoride, the arsenic, all of the stuff and the pharmaceuticals. It is so easy to install for people. And we have a very special deal or you've put together actually a really special offer just to out of the box listeners. I want you to talk about this. The, the, you have this uh, water filter available to them at a very special price, is that tr is that correct? Yes, uh, right now my goal is to help as many people as possible because every day I'm getting referrals from doctors across the country. I consult with clinics that deal with people with cancer, leukemia, uh, chemical sensitivity is a big issue today and it's because of a lot of to exposure to all these toxic substances. And, and people need an affordable, very easy, simple to use type of device that can go on your faucet or be installed under the sink and it's cost effective it's a lot less expensive than bottled water it'll give you better quality than bottled water it's not a uh, entry level filter it's not one of these pour through pitches that really don't take out all the toxic substances because a lot of people are using you know these pour through pitches and they really don't address fluoride or parasites or uh, the pharmaceuticals and you have to have you have to step up to a better filtration system that is affordable within a reasonable price range, and this will do it. This is the answer. And when you, when you had just mentioned to the about the pour through water pitchers, they remove only a certain amount of is it bacteria that they remove? Most of them don't remove any bacteria. Uh, they generally remove chlorine, lead. Uh, they may remove some other substances, but bacteria and parasites are not removed by most pour through pitchers that I'm aware of. Or pharmaceuticals or fluoride. Or pharma that's yeah. correct. Right. Okay. And so, um, so this spe special deal that, uh, that Dr. Roy Spicer is putting together for out of the box listeners is they have the ability to get this unit. It regularly retails with, well, this particular package that uh, Dr. Spicer has put together, it retails for $269 normally. And for out of the box listeners, it is a phenomenal price of $199. That includes the unit, the water filter unit, the There's Metal Gone, one, right? All in one Metal Gone filter. The Metal Gone fi filter, that includes that. There's free shipping. And in addition to that, as a little added bonus, Dr. Roy is going to throw in something very cool. I, I love this idea. You have a sports bottle that you're going to throw in with this, with this deal that, is, that has a mini filter in it, similar to the, the filter that you're going to have for the sink, right? Right. Well, we want to make sure you're covered all the time when you're out of the house. So if you take your filter bottle with you and you fill it with the water from your, the unit, the AIO metal gun unit, and you run out, now if you have to go to a tap somewhere, at least you have a filter that takes out a whole range of contaminants, covers almost the same amount of contaminants as the sink unit. So you'll never run out of clean water. You can take it wherever you go. So a lot of people, they're biking or they go to the gym, they're traveling in the car. We don't recommend leaving it in the car, just like you know the other types it's a plastic bottle but it's a non-leachable non-bpa b 
BPA free plastic bottle with a very highly effective filter in it. I love this idea. I love it. I love it because I am always on the go. I'm hardly, I'm, you know, I'm here in the morning at my house, but then I go to work and then I'm, you know, just, I just go, 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 go all day. And if I don't have, a, if I don't have the ability to have fresh water, uh, then I mean, I'm so behind the ball, you know what I'm saying? It's like, then I'm, then I have to go and buy bottled water at the store. I have to get the stuff that has the thin plastic that is leaching the BPAs, leaching all the bad plastic into my body. Plus I'm not sure what the filtration is of those, of those waters. And I'm spending money. The idea that you include this sports bottle with the filter is just brilliant for people that are on the go. You know, just, I mean, just, just life in general gets you out. You're, you're always in your car. You're always driving around running errands or whatever. And we do need to drink more water. This is the important thing. We have to drink more water. If, if I can go back in time, I you know I'm over 50 years old. If I can go back in time and tell every young person plus myself, it would be, you must drink more water. And, um, so this is an awesome deal. So, okay. So here's what it is. Again, this is for the AIO water filter. Plus, you're going to get the uh, sports bottle with the water filter, water filter sports bottle as well. This retails well over $269 to everybody else, but to our wonderful listeners at Out of the Box Radio, Dr. Roy Spicer is making it available for $199, $199, and that includes free shipping. So here's where, this is where they're supposed to go, right, to, to order it. CWRenviro.com forward slash Christine. Again, it's C W R E N V I R O dot com forward slash Christine. And we'll make sure we put the link up as well. That's a special page just for the listeners, correct? Yes, that's only for your listeners. Uh, this is uh, not advertised anywhere else. And I did this because you have a lot of people that listen to your show that are very concerned about their health. And this is a way they can protect their health and really get clean, safe drinking water all the time. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. We'll make sure that we have the link up uh, as well available. I want to encourage everybody to get this. If not, if, if you don't get it for yourself, then get it for your family, for your children, to make sure that they have pure drinking water. To me, it is the most important thing you know what? My refrigerator could lay bare. My freezer could have nothing in it. My cupboards could be bare. I don't care. The most important thing to me is pure, clean drinking water in order to be healthy, in order to, like, it just helps so many different things. And especially with our kids, our growing kids, I think it's absolutely important. So um, I'm going to give out the web address again for that special deal. It's the AIO water filter uh, with metal be gone, you get a, uh, with this deal, you're going to get a free sports bottle thrown in. This is a very unique sports bottle with the water filter inside of it. So you can be on the go and always have fresh water. It is available, uh, normally to the public for $269. You're getting it today for $199 and it's available at cwrenviro.com forward slash Christine C W R. E-N-V-I-R-O dot com forward slash Christine. And again, we'll put that link up uh, as well. I, I'm just so excited about this, Dr. Spicer, about the fact that people are going to be able to have access to clean, pure water no matter where they live. If they live in Los Angeles or if they live in New York or if they live, you know, wherever, they have the ability to have clean, fresh water now. Well, I'm very happy that we've been able to bring this to the uh, marketplace. Uh, it's a unique filter breakthrough. And again, no one has ever re had one filter that can remove this whole range of contaminants, the bacteria, parasites, chloramine, chlorine, and the fluoride is exceptional. Uh, anyone else out there that claims to take out fluoride is not even close to 92%. Uh, it takes out lead 99%. So if you had high levels of lead in your water, whether it's from rotting pipes or lead solders in your house or the source water, 99% removal of lead. The pharmaceutical compounds, that's a, a breakthrough. No one has ever put any type of filter material that's in all in one with, uh, with the fluoride, the chloramine, and the lead that can take out pharmaceuticals. This is a big, big issue. 
So now you can be assured that you can have safe, clean drinking water wherever you go. Ah, oh, you're doing the Lord's work, <laughs> Dr. Spicer. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Dr. I, again, that's why I call you Dr. Water. I want to I want to ask you just as an aside too, what got you what got you interested in this? I know I mean you're a scientist by probably by nature, but what got you so interested in water in particular? Because I, I, well, I find it fascinating. I find the whole subject matter of water fascinating to me. Back in the 1980s, I was a holistic practitioner in New York on Long Island, and there were many, many toxic waste sites. Beautiful area, but they've been dumping chemicals in the ground for decades. And I started noticing in my practice, we were seeing people with unusual types of cancers like brain cancer and liver cancer. And the hospital system saw the same type of problem. So they formed a task force. I became the co-chairman and we did an investigation. We found five toxic waste sites right in the area. Two of them, because of our efforts, eventually became Superfund sites. And it was all these chemicals that these old industries had dumped in the ground, radioactivity. And we made the connection after doing the research that we had this cancer cluster or disease cluster in our area which now, after 30 years later, they found Long Island has over 200 toxic waste sites. It's all coming back up into this groundwater, into our drinking water. So there's a connection there, and it's a problem all over the United States. I became interested in finding a solution. It was scary. I lived there. I didn't want to get cancer. I didn't want to get sick. So I knew we had to do something to protect our drinking water, and that's how I got involved. And after doing research, we started out with a company that uh, you know, is not in existence anymore. And then we evolved from there. And over the years, we had to get bigger and bigger, more filters to take out more contaminants. Finally, uh, I formed my own company back in the 1990s with uh, my partner who was a PhD scientist and we developed these products. You know, I worked with different manufacturers. We combined different technologies, but this newer technology came up as an outgrowth of our efforts working with uh, one particular manufacturer. We told them we needed to get all these different contaminants out with our research staff and with their research staff, they came up with this new product, which is just outstanding. And we have a trademark, it's called Metal Gone, and it's incorporated into this new filter. And it just does an amazing amount of cleanup of the water in one filter. And how long would this filter last? Like how many uses or how many gallons of, of water can you uh, put through that filter without having to replace it? Well. For- Fluoride alone, you could get several hundred gallons, chlorine a thousand gallons, lead it over a thousand gallons. So for an average family, for two people, you're looking about nine months to a year, depending on how toxic the water is. For a family of four, I'd say about six months to a year. Fantastic. When you really get down to it, it's really 10, 15 cents a gallon, where you're getting, you know, if you go out and compare it to bottled water, and, uh, you know, you don't want to spend two, three thousand dollars a year on bottled water. It's crazy. So here's you have a filter. So if you change it every six months, you're still way ahead of the curve and getting much better quality water. I'll tell you something, Dr. Spicer. I I know that I've spent so much money on water. <laughs> I I spend so much money on water because I go, you know, obviously it's when you're on the run and you're in, you go to the gas station, you're getting your gas, you go, I need, I'm so thirsty, I need water. And you grab a bottle of water there, the plastic bottle. Or if I'm at the grocery store and I feel really fancy pantsy, I go and I get the glass bottles of water, which are, you know, always more expensive. The Italian this or that, you know, spring water, this and that. And I've spent a fortune. I know I've spent well over $200, probably, you know, close to a month of, of, of having just, you know, good tasting water. And it's probably hasn't even been um, is filtered as, as your wonderful filter does. So this is an awesome deal, folks. I hope you take advantage of it. You can go to cwrenviro.com forward slash Christine for a very unique deal, very unique opportunity. You will get the AIO, the brand new AIO water filter with Metal Gone. And you will also add it in uh, as a very special bonus to Out of the Box listeners, this awesome sports bottle that has the water filter. It's a water filter sports bottle, so it's portable. You can take it with you anywhere when you're going on going on bike rides, when you're going to the beach, when you're in your car commuting with the kids. You can get that insane package, not for $269, which would, what it retails for normally, but for $199, you're saving $70 bucks 
and you will get it right away. I understand the shipping goes out uh, quite quickly from uh, Dr. Spicer. So again, we want to encourage you to go to cwrenviro.com forward slash Christine and pick up this incredible, incredible unit, the AIO water filter plus the sports bottle thrown in for free. I'm so excited. I'm so, so happy to have you on the show too, Dr. Spicer. I wanted to have you on for a long time and to get into the nitty gritty of water. And I just appreciate everything you do. Every, everybody that I have on Out of the Box Radio is doing something wonderful for the world, something positive, making a, a huge impact. And I believe what you're doing is making a huge impact. So I want to thank you again for being with me this hour and uh, being with our listeners too. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure being on your show, and thank you for having me on, Christine. Ah, uh, my pleasure. We'll have you come back because I know there's going to be more talk. We're going to be talking about water for a long time. I know it. I just want to remind listeners that I have been speaking with Dr. Roy Spicer. He is uh, just, uh, as I call him, Dr. Water, and you can get this uh, a ph- phenomenal deal. Again, it's available right now at cwrenviro.com forward slash Christine. Get the whole package, the AIO water filter plus the filtered sports bottle for just $199. You're saving $70 and you're going to be saving your health too, trust me. All right, folks, this is all. that's all for today. Please tune in next week for another installment of Out of the Box Radio. And thank you listeners for tuning in. I want to remind you, as always, you can take the show on YouTube and share it easily because that's an easy way to do it on YouTube. But you can also subscribe to the show on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, a speaker, Stitcher, all of those wonderful uh, podcast applications. Until next time, as always, remember to think outside the box. Bye.